Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Tyrell Momberg and I'm the Principal Technical Advisor with ISC and I will be moderating today's session on materials life cycle impacts using alternate OCA techniques, which is sponsored by ETOR. In the spirit of reconciliation, uh, the ISC acknowledges the traditional custodians of country and their connections to land, sea, and community. We pay our respects to the elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. So today's session is sponsored by ETOR and the agenda for today is for ETOR to briefly introduce their company and themselves. They will then provide a high level overview of the materials RCA guideline document um, that was issued by the ISC in May of this year. And then they will spend some time talking through their RCA tool and explain how it is in the process of being approved as equivalent, which means essentially that it can be used in lieu of the IS materials calculator within an IS submission. We'll have plenty of time at the end uh, to answer all of your questions. In terms of introductions, uh, Maria Perthen will be presenting today and she is joined by Rob Campbell to answer any technical queries at the end. Uh, Maria is an electrical engineer and business development manager at ETO. During her studies in Germany, she chose the environmental path and worked in the industry, providing renewable um, and electric vehicles. After moving to Australia, she dedicated her work to decarbonizing the construction industry by joining ETO in 2018. Uh, there are some housekeeping items to go through just before I hand over to Maria. The chat function is turned off, but I would invite you all to submit your questions through the Q&A function, which you'll see at the bottom of your screens. Um, and you can submit your questions throughout the presentation and we will address these at the end. Now to hand over to Maria, thanks very much. Thank you, Ty. Thanks for the warm introduction. Um, I'd like to share my screen quickly. Hope you can see it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting that um, today is actually the day where I uh, moved to Australia um, six years ago. It was the first time I came as a tourist and now um, living here and um, working at ETO, which has been a very, very um, exciting journey. So thanks everyone for uh, joining this webinar. Um, uh, I would like to quickly go through the agenda. So um, in the beginning, I'll give you a quick introduction about ETO, uh, for those who don't know of ETO, and, um, and then talk about materials LCA guideline. Um, and then provide a quick software demonstration um, to show how you can use LCA uh, for our source 6 credit, but also uh, for um, other features. So um, for those who haven't heard of ETOL, um, ETOL serves the organizations who are aiming to lead the industry in delivering low carbon buildings and infrastructure. And we've been recognized for our integrity, teamwork and passion for the environment. As you know, construction industry at the moment is going through a big shift uh, towards net zero and even beyond. So at the end of the day, um, to meet Paris Agreement uh, targets, we need to start building low carbon infrastructure and buildings today and act. So what do we do? Um, ETOL is an LCI expert and uh, we um, uh, also are members at uh, GBCA, um, ISC, MECLA and um, ALCAS. Um, we've successfully consulted quite a few um, governmental organizations and councils on matters of um, providing them help with uh, planning uh, schemes and frameworks and how to uh, include performance-based uh, approach or LCA. Uh, ETO is also a software provider 
So we uh, created a software ETO LCD in-house and uh, it's been developed uh, since 10 years already. Many um, Australian uh, and uh, overseas company already use uh, ETO in-house for infrastructure such as CPB, Jacobs, uh, Acom and so on. And finally, um, we also provide LCA consulting services. So we worked on a few iconic projects um, such as um, HS2 and uh, Metronet um, uh, from the Public Transport Authority and um, in WA and main roads in WA. So now I'd like to give you a quick overview uh, to the materials LCA guideline and uh, what any LCA software provider needs to do to align with uh, IC materials calculator. So how it's all started, um, it's been about a year ago that um, uh, we started to look at this and as you know, um, for materials credit at um, ISC rating, uh, you, you can use an alternative pathway, but it wasn't clearly defined. So we reached out to um, uh, IS Council and um, uh, wanted to provide some, um, you know, some assistance. So the idea was really to allow um, many LCA providers to come up with their um, tools and with their LCA solutions for uh, materials credit, RSO6 or MET1. Um, and then, so we, we worked from the inception of these guidelines and um, uh, helped to create the first draft. Um, it then went through multiple uh, reviews and received a bit of feedback from um, the industry and from the LCA experts from the community. Um, at the same time, so we wanted to make sure that the results are robust and comparable between the IS materials calculator and the uh, LCA software providers. Uh, but also we wanted to make sure that um, the LCA is not being uh, limited in its scope because um, it also needs to be aligned with the international LCA standards and procedures that act actually require us to include certain uh, scope into the assessment. So it's a bit of a fine balance, uh, but it's important to go through it so that we can um, you know, help to design low carbon infrastructure projects, but also can extract the information in a desired form. So the guideline says that um, every um, LCA uh, technique needs to be approved first. Um, so to do so, um, you need to um, yeah, submit an alignment report and um, ISC equivalence procedure. Um, then it goes through a review and approval process and you get an approval for 12 months that you will need to resubmit again after. Um, the guideline uh, addresses multiple topics. Uh, one of them is it's a guideline for LCA tool providers, basically telling them how uh, they can they need to demonstrate alignment with the IS materials calculator and the data running in the background. Secondly, it's a manual for LCA practitioners um, and um, showing them how they need to perform their LCA studies. And thirdly, it's also a um, guideline for the verifiers. Um, and that was an important step because we, uh, we want to make sure that it doesn't create additional work for IS verifiers, so rather takes this work away from them. And so um, it was an important step to also provide third party review for LCA studies so that um, they uh, can make sure that it's aligned and um, they just uh, need to look at the summary of the information that is being verified by someone else. So now I'll quickly jump to, um, to the actual uh, document. Um, so you probably have seen it, it's, um, it's been published um, um, in May um, and um, it gives you an overview. And um, this is where uh, it speaks about the approval process and um, the technique. So the alignment reports um, needs to include certain components and certain uh, level of um, alignment. So first of all, it's asset level. So you need to um, demonstrate that um, uh, the results on asset level are uh, comparable to IS materials calculator, and you need to demonstrate it on three infrastructure projects um, and show that they are within plus minus 10% uh, difference. Um, the next level is materials level. So for all materials that are in the software tool uh, or in, in the LCA tool, um, they need uh, you know, to, uh, to be aligned with the IS materials calculator values and um, uh, so also need to demonstrate plus minus 10% um, variation. 
Um, and um, then confirmation that the data that um, is being used similar to the background data uh, of the ice materials calculator, which is um, actually the case with uh, ETO because we also use Australasian LCI, um, Shadow Database, EcoInvent, and EPD's data. Um, and then another part of the alignment procedure is also to provide uh, equivalence procedure where you demonstrate um, or basically give some guidelines to, uh, to the LCA practitioners and verifiers on how to use your tool for RSO6 reporting. Then the document goes into um, actual guidelines of, um, for LCA practitioners and for verifiers. Um, and I'm going to use my presentation for this uh, to talk about it a bit later. So for the LCA practitioners, um, so generally um, LCA studies need to follow international standards uh, and guidelines. And I uh, would not want to bother you with talking about these uh, standards, but um, it's already there. It's, it's been uh, used in many, many countries. And uh, so it provides you really a very strict framework and principles and calculation methods on how to do LCA and how it should be reported. Um, and so, ITO um, has aligned uh, our uh, reports with um, these requirements and we strictly follow them. Um, so also LCA study for uh, RSO6 uh, needs to include the following LCA modules. Uh, these are modules A1 to A5, as well as B2 to B5. So as you can see, other modules such as B6 and B7, which are energy and water use uh, in the operational stage are not included, as well as C module not included into RSO6 because they're covered in the different credits of IS rating. Um, then um, the LCA journey. So the results need to be summarized uh, in a table and um, showed percentage of um, change by different indicators including um, IS Enviro points. Also, uh, you need to demonstrate how you're getting the, to these percentages of uh, savings, and um, you might you need to provide a list of um, quantified strategies uh, that you put forward to achieve a desired outcome. For quality assurance, international standards require LCA studies to be independently reviewed. So the third party reviewer can be from within the organization if they meet certain requirements or from outside as an external LCA consultant. So it gives um, a lot of um, you know, uh, certainty for uh, those who review uh, the documentation that they don't need to make sure that um, it's met uh, so that, that the LCA study meets the requirement uh, from the international standards. And so results also comparable internationally. Now, let me provide um, a quick demonstration of uh, ETOL software and um, how you can use it for modeling of infrastructure projects. And uh, so first, um, I'd like to note that um, so the intent of the whole LCA process uh, was to ensure that an alternative uh, LCA technique produces a similar or verifiable result, but it was not to um, turn in the alternative tool or LCA software into the IS materials calculator. As, um, so you will see that the scope of uh, assessment that is available in LCA tools it can be much larger. And generally, there are also more features that can benefit uh, for your design. So these features are um, mainly that it's a design tool, right? It's rather than an assessment tool, um, it's a design tool, life cycle design. And um, we also have, um, we've got data import function. So uh, there is beam integration, um, CSV files upload. Um, so there is less prompt to human error. Uh, a very cool feature is um, box warp of, uh, of the information. So when you can um, identify materials that you would like to swap, and it helps you to save lots of time. Um, another feature uh, is uh, life cycle cost. Uh, so by switching from one indicator from carbon, for example, to a dollar perspective, you will get uh, your capex and opex over life of the project. Um, and uh, we also have automated reports. So um, you just focus on modeling and you can print a report that is compliant to international standards, saves you heaps of time. And finally, um, ETOL is uh, actually a cloud-based uh, carbon management platform. 
where uh, you can have multiple projects and um, collaborate with um, users from within your organization or outside of your organization. And you can use um, this information from the completed projects for benchmarking, for carbon reporting, and uh, for sharing the information and improving the designs uh, as you get more and more information and IP. So um, just to remind again, um, RSO 6 scope is um, covering A1 to A5, as well as B2 to B5 energy water end of life uh, covered in different uh, credits whereas with e-tool software you can um, model not only rso6 scope but also energy water uh, waste and end of life uh, recycled content so for rso6 reporting you kind of need to uh, scope those modules out and uh, report just on a certain amount of the lca model um, so that's enough from the theory. Um, finally, I jump on the, to the software. So um, as I said before, um, the, um, uh, the software is cloud-based and um, uh, you can see here on the right side different projects. Um, they can be, you know, different assets it could be typologies of uh, the projects you're dealing with. You can copy and paste them. Uh, you can see um, there are different models. You can have a benchmark. You can have a concept design model for the same project. It can be 50% uh, developed design, 100% uh, developed final design or as built. And you can see how all these results um, differ as you progress with um, design development. Um, and also you see um, uh, the overall emissions across all assets. Um, so your final carbon footprint as well as savings. And um, I think it's uh, also becoming more and more important to report on overall emissions across all assets and also uh, show how much uh, emissions you are, you are avoiding or saving. Um, here you have different users. Um, they can uh, jump in and out and uh, collaborate on defined projects there and um, that's how um, ETO is being used by large organizations such as HS2 and Public Transport Authority in WA. So um, they collaborate with subcontractors uh, who do the actual LCA modeling for them and, um, and then they keep the license and just uh, allocate one seat to another user. So you can see here you can purchase a certain number of seats and then allocate them to people who are involved or say, okay, this is on, going to be only with only user. Um, now I'd like to, um, uh, to go into an example project. Um, so I picked up uh, a future station um, that is like an elevated station with uh, rail infrastructure. Um, sometimes pro uh, some projects can have, you know, only infrastructure elements. Some of them will have also some building elements and then you're results will depend a lot based on that. Um, so um, in this project, we have three models. Uh, one is benchmark. So actually what you will be comparing against, uh, let's call it gray infrastructure, right? And then a low carbon design, which is your you know, zero carbon option, or you know, the maybe a bit futuristic option that you would like to discuss with your clients early on and, and suggest uh, some improvements. And then final design after the workshop, you may want to see um, what considerations, um, what, what design options were uh, approved, and then uh, you get your final result. Um, so when you uh, create a project, it's important that you select the right data set. Um, in Italy, we have um, you know, different data sets to address uh, impacts from different regions. Um, but also different time zones. And we update our data set um, almost every year as the better and better data becomes available and work with Australasian LCI. Um, so for the purpose of ESCA alignment, we also have done um, quite intense work to uh, align our data with IS materials calculator. So it's important that you pick the right data set. The latest available uh, will be more aligned with uh, IS um, materials calculator. You choose the um, allocation uh, for your project, give a little description, and um, here you've got already some results for the bench, uh, for the benchmark or for the business as usual case. So you see this project 
um, and overall emissions over the whole uh, time in life, uh, let's say 100 or 150, 120 years, um, is about 75,000 of CO2, um, out of which, you know, about half comes from energy consumption. Um, then we've got some uh, materials that are used there, transport emissions, construction uh, related emissions, recurring emissions, water, end of life, and we also have some um, product reuse, which is quite interesting. You see it as a negative impact. It shows that um, there are some materials that were taken from previous projects and could be reused. So you, you are reducing the number of um, emissions by this amount. Um, you've got indicators on the right side, uh, global warming potential, probably you know, so everyone is talking about this right now, but also there are other impact categories and you can choose also the lens of um, um, dollars or uh, life cycle cost analysis. And the whole model will turn into a life cycle cost analysis. So you will see how much approximately this project would cost and what would be um, the running cost as well as um, initial investment cost. Um, but let's focus on carbon first. Um, so the next thing you need to do is to uh, identify the modules, how you're going to report. So for LCA, uh, international standards require you to report on all these modules. That's why default you will find they're all switched on. But for the purpose of uh, RSO 6, you will simply need to switch those modules off and produce a report, right? So it's quite simple and uh, <laughs> Um, and then you got you narrowed your scope for reporting for RSO6. This is quite common um, depending on the different rating schemes uh, that require you to report just on certain uh, scope. Um, so you see it became 40 and doesn't include energy, water, end of life, and so on. Um, so next one, uh, I'd like to go into indicators. Um, you need to, again, report on different indicators such as um, global warming potential, acidification, um, but we've got also many other indicators you may be interested in for design. Could be net fresh water, uh, fresh water use, could be use of renewable power, um, waste, uh, it could be uh, financial indicators. Uh, land use, uh, toxicity. Um, so for the purpose of ISCA reporting, um, IS reporting, um, we'll need to switch those on and, uh, and save. And so in your later report, you will find this, uh, these indicators in the report. Um, site attribute is quite interesting and, and maybe less important for the purpose of RSO6 because uh, it doesn't cover energy. But I'm just going to show you how much um, how important it is to use the right data and depending on the state. So you can see that energy for a Victorian grid uh, is, uh, contributes to almost half of overall carbon emissions by um, switching, let's say, to Tasmanian grid. And if you would just like to compare and say, okay, this project will be um, built in uh, Tasmania, absolutely the same project. Um, emissions um, are so much lower, so it's it uh, dropped significantly just uh, based on the fact that as many in grid is uh, less carbon intense. So now I just go back to Victoria. And um, show you further um, so financial indicators um, uh, for life cycle cost analysis. Um, and quality checks. Quality checks are something that uh, we implemented in the software to make sure that um, the reports and also the whole modeling uh, is uh, strictly following international standards for the LCA. And there are some requirements that are also covered in the LCA manual, um, such as geographical relevancy, precision, completeness, and so on. So when something is wrong and not working right, the right way, the software will notify you and you will um, you know, get, get a call for action uh, to fix it, right? So um, it also gives you some indications that uh, you know, you're following the, the process and uh, there are some automated uh, checks. Um, and two more most important ones, I guess, are completeness. Uh, so when uh, you will scope out certain modules, um, then the software will ask you to justify it. And again, this is required by the standards. It's not something we wanted to do in a way. 
as well as modules, um, you know, those modules that for, are for RSO6, you can simply say, okay, this is just for reporting for RSO6, which is fine. But you can also have two reports, one to um, report on overall LCA, uh, full of life emissions, and another one could be just to report on RSO6 uh, credit. Um, and, and just a simple example, I can give you a pavement, uh, let's say it's a highway road. Um, if you include just the materials uh, that form part of the pavement, that's one scope, um, would you then, you know, be interested to include also a recurring impacts like maintenance, uh, end of life when you need to demolish the same uh, road? Um, would you then include lighting? Um, because again, lighting you know would contribute to the operation of this uh, of this road, and usually there are no roads that are built without right uh, lighting. So it um, becomes important to really um, include as many components as possible into your assessment, just to give you know, a bit more realistic picture. Um, now I'd like to dig into this benchmark uh, model um, and show you what it consists of. So. Um, we operate with components. Um, they represent you know, larger um, parts of the project. It could be the whole buildings. It could be uh, it could be a bridge. Um, it could be earthworks. Uh, it could be a railway infrastructure, uh, tunnels. It can be even you know design team and labor costs that um, are required to design the whole project. So they're quite small here. Um, but um, you can also include that uh, lighting, uh, water consumption. So really everything is in there to form the part of the project. Um, and, um, and then you, um, you can look at um, the low carbon design and see, okay, um, so the previous model um, emissions are 75,000 of tons. Uh, low carbon design are only 11 or almost 12,000 of tons. How do you get there? Like, how do you achieve this? And there is a really nice feature in the software called recommendations uh, or scenarios in the newest version of software. Uh, this, this one was modeled before we implemented it, but basically it quantifies um, the strategies that you would like to put forward uh, to achieve the percentage uh, carbon reduction. For example, um, you're thinking to replace concrete by different uh, material and you would like to know exactly how much carbon it's saving, you can see it here. Um, and so it kind of freezes the previous model and just does that particular change and uh, quantifies it uh, automatically for you. It can be really anything, like you, you can use the power of your creativity. Um, and um, for example, you can say, okay, I would like to know how much carbon is going to save me if I work with a, a local um, ballast provider or a materials manufacturer. So you can see in this case, uh, it's a very carbon intense uh, material in this project. So it makes sense to focus on that and maybe what, try to reduce transport emissions that are here. But in overall, as you can see, um, so when you look at benchmark, um, overall transport emissions are just a fraction of total emissions. So it's always important to keep this in perspective and to know what, what you should be focusing on, as well as recurring emissions or maintenance replacements over 100 years of operation of the facility are going to be uh, very significant too. Um, smart street lighting and so on. So it could be even um, a solar or wind uh, PV park, park that um, um, is, uh, supplies power to your facility, or if you share that again uh, across different facilities, you can also model that. So it becomes really quite powerful, it, the amount of components you can add on to this. Um, the next feature I'd like to show is also analysis tab. Um, so analysis tab um, is really helpful for, um, um, for running hotspots analysis or hot areas. So you look through the project, um, on the project through the prism of life cycle assessment modules. Um, and here are your overall emissions. Um, here you can see different you know, sub projects. Um, and, um, and then you see, in the dark red, uh, what areas are causing more carbon? So you can really focus on them. And it's really helpful um, when you think about 
you know, providing recommendations. So you really spend less time guessing, uh, but you know, really target those areas of concern. Um, and because it also includes everything, uh, including modules D and C, which is end of life. And um, I think especially in uh, Victoria context um, and uh, also in uh, New South Wales, as far as I know, um, the, uh, the idea of construction waste and materials recycling and um, it becomes really, really important. So you can look at these elements separately here and you can report on the overall um, recycled content of your materials in the project and how much carbon it helped you to save. Um, as well as materials um, recovery. So it could be, you know, how much, um, how many materials you're using from previous projects that can be, um, can be reused. So it really helps you to reduce um, emissions by a certain amount. And it's interesting that here you can see that um, it's negative. So it helps you to reduce it by mm, 3000 of tons, um, whereas total emissions for um, transport, uh, sorry, for transport here, A4, um, are in similar uh, number. So it becomes quite interesting to see how you can also offset certain emissions, you know, through clever design. Um, <clears throat> when you dig into materials, you, you can also run sensitivity analysis. So basically uh, you say, okay, uh, dear software, um, please pull out all uh, top 20 materials for me that are the most carbon intense. Again, this is really, really helpful because then you see uh, all these materials displayed uh, on which part of the project they are. And, and then you can focus on them. You can target those exactly and provide recommendations and trying to replace those materials to see uh, you know, uh, why is this the case. Um, and it's often very eye-opening for the uh, projects we've done LCA for in the infrastructure space where they didn't realize that certain materials were really causing them headache. They didn't even know it before they've done LCA um, analysis. Um, so that's really, um, really exciting. And um, I'd like now to um, just dig into one of the, um, in uh, one of these templates and show you what else you can do. Um, I thought I will probably just look at this one, um, a rail infrastructure. Um, so you can see in nested templates here, what it consists of, uh, what are sub elements, um, but we can also just look at, um, uh, at this particular component, um, thinking about materials. Okay, so this railway infrastructure, you know, part of that would consist of uh, metals and concrete and uh, ballast. So as you can see, uh, each product has a defined uh, product life that comes from the data from the data source that we're using as a default setting, um, and uh, it has its uh, emissions. Um, and uh, so you can see that ballast in this particular case is um, you know is more dominating the emissions here, and you can see that recurring emissions for that component are really also driving the carbon. So I uh, want to think of the materials that are really robust and um, gonna serve you longer. Um, and then that's kind of the uh, highest level of detail we're dealing with. Um, you can choose different materials. So in E2, we have all materials that are um, part of the IS materials calculator, but we also have a few, quite a few more. So if you can't find, you know, if you would like to um, find a different material, you can always just um, uh, pull this screen and, um, and try to you know, enter it and find a different material and specify it and see, see how results would change then. Um, also certain settings are um, default, uh, again, based on the uh, database that we're using. So what, for example, material life here set as default 15 years based on the experience. Um, and um, if, you, if you know that the material life would be 10 years, uh, then you can also change that. Um, also, it says that this material has 80% closed loop recycling. So for every material that have that component in there, it will then be displayed separately in module D2. And you can always uh, report on these things uh, separately and for the whole project, which is really quite exciting. Um, well, you can also set uh, maintenance and repair intervals um, and um, we'll use the default setting. 
Um, transport is also default. So if you don't know, <laughs> right, what your transport emissions are, don't don't uh, worry, you know, because the default uh, information there. Um, but if you definitely know that one of your material suppliers, uh, you know, comes from uh, from a very um, local source, um, you can also just change it to manual distances and add, uh, you know, a CO or a truck, or uh, and then add manually the distances, and that, that's really cool. But again, before you change anything, think about the hotspot analysis and sensitivity analysis, like how much carbon it would really help you to save if you focus on this little area, especially for material that maybe um, is not so dominating your emissions. So uh, probably sometimes not worth spending time there and just work with um, larger components and larger blocks. And this is what we try to do when we do the modeling. Um, yes, another um, interesting thing I wanted to show you is library. Um, so um, that really where uh, you can have lots of fun and, you know, um, pull out components that are prefabricated for you and you don't need to you know, create a model from scratch. I'd say um, I'd like to look at, um, find maybe, uh, you know, pavement for my road. Um, so it says, okay, highway pavement here. Um, and I would like also to have a component uh, to it, which is lighting, you know, just examples that I showed before. Here we go, highway, light, and standard. Um, so you see that the highway here is uh, pre-modeled for you. It's all typical materials and levels that pavement will consist of. You can use it as it is, right, for high level and early LCI assessment, because it already has quantity, so you can scale it up and down. And, um, and provide you know, really quick high level results. And you know, focusing on those areas, you can add light as well um, and, and look at you know, the um, components that are how it's made and uh, here's operational energy. And uh, you can just uh, you know, edit, uh, make a jewel. Uh, and um, so it's really uh, quite um, uh, flexible. And um, what we really strongly encourage our users to do is, to spend less time modeling from scratch and really try to, you know, the, use what, what is already there. And we've got lots of templates, um, having worked on, on many infrastructure projects where, that you can already use uh, for early LCA um, stages and um, provide quick uh, results. Because uh, often uh, from our experience has been so far that uh, we get to do LCA very late when the project is under construction and then um, it's very difficult to come up with ideas and really say okay you could have done this and that <laughs> because these ideas cannot can no longer be implemented um, that's a big shame because if LCA would have been done earlier then you would have so much bigger chances to achieve um, a really impressive um, outcome um, okay so I'm just um, I guess quickly repeating what I covered carbon management platform, um, optimized components, understanding your embodied carbon, hotspot analysis, sensitivity analysis. You can dig into materials options and, uh, and design them better and um, also play around with different components. Um, we do have APD's library as well and uh, templates library. Um, and um, here are a few case studies. Um, so the largest project in of the infrastructure space we're working on uh, at the moment is HS2, which is high-speed railway in the UK, uh, the largest infrastructure project uh, in Europe. Um, so they simply set a 50% carbon reduction target for the entire portfolio. So every single station, every single rail has to achieve this target. It's really very challenging. Um, but um, their scope of assessment includes energy as well. So uh, it's different scope compared to RSO6. Um, it's um, something also to keep in mind. Uh, so it's easier to achieve these targets when you include energy. Um, and, um, and then the software is being used to, to achieve LCA uh, reports to get them for a BREEAM infrastructure tool as well as uh, to collaborate with subcontractors. So uh, HS2 engages uh, different uh, organizations that do the modeling for them. And HS2 just, just keeps the uh, models uh, in, inside of the software and provide reporting for on carbon and emissions. 
Um, and PTA WA um, also uses ETOOL in a similar manner. Uh, so all Metronet projects need to conduct an LCA uh, to use it in early planning um, and uh, also demonstrate the reduction, um, not only of materials, but also energy, water, land use. And, um, and also um, the uh, LCA can be used in conjunction with life cycle assessment, uh, life cycle cost assessment to run uh, more cost-efficient uh, options. Um, and this is a, a little um, example that we've modeled based water station. Uh, we've got it on our website. Um, I'll encourage you to have a look and, um, and just see how the modeling was done and what were the findings. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. Um, hope you enjoyed it.